Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-12. Last time we discovered that multiple dangers lurked in the sewers below the city of Phoenix. While our group had been successful, the challenges were getting more difficult. We left the group where we rejoined them, bracing for an encounter next to an underground lake. What is it? What is it? exclaimed a concerned Welby O'Toole as the flickering torch cast shadows across the undulating waters of the underground lake. The others shushed him as their own fears of the unknown were beginning to run rampant. The two party members of Elven Descent took deep breaths with Cabe Silvertongue, the bard, first to speak. It's about eight feet across and it has two protrusions atop the center section. I I I'm not sure if I can describe it better, but it may be a huge turtle. Lady Irena, the mage, disagreed and began to stammer a more descriptive analysis of the submerged creature as it broke the water line. The two eye stalks rising first, she yelled, Giant Crab! as a look of horror crossed Fargus the Ranger and Sister Elaine the Cleric's faces. Mouths open, words escaped to both of them. As all four stared at the monster's appearance, they heard a splash and noticed that the halfling rogue had jumped into the murky water and was charging towards the creature. Die! yelled out the smallest member of the party as he made his way towards the beast. Briefly shocked, the rest of the adventurers plunged into the waters and paired off, heading towards the legs of the creature. As each group crossed on the feet, they were surprised as three foot long snapping claws emerged from the water and took aim at the ladies of the party. Sister Elaine took aim and smashed the appendage moving towards her with her mace that gave a resounding crack upon the strike. Cabe encountered with a short sword attack and grasped the second blade in preparation. The other claw headed straight for Lady Irena, the wizard, but went over her head as Fargus, the human ranger, hip-checked her into the water and took the brunt of the damage himself. From her prone position, the elven woman pointed a finger and let out a torrent of magic words, causing a long fire bolt to leap out and strike the crab. The damage was minimal, but was enough to loosen the grip on the ranger, who also fell into the water out of the crab's claw. With melee in full gear, Sister Elaine noted that she couldn't see Welby and yelled out for him as she continued to batter the large crustacean. Moments seemed long, but her yelling was answered from atop of the beast. O'Toole had climbed up the rear of the creature and ran up its armored back. As he reached the eye stalks, he slid into them and put a chokehold on one stalk. This move created panic in the watery beast, and it began to flail about with its claws gnashing into the ceiling of the large chamber, sending debris down into the water. Firebolts continued to rain down on the creature, as Fargus's sword attacks seemed to have little effect. On the opposite side, Cabe had discovered a chink in the creature's plating, and the cleric's battering attack was having a powerful effect. The creature swatted well be off its back with one claw that it had used to attack the ranger and the mage, and clamped down on Sister Elaine with the other pincer, causing her to scream out in agony. The pain was brief as Cabe severed the creature's appendage dropping it from its body and knocking the human female backwards, still clamped in its stuck claw. As the creature teetered unsteady, a loud splash indicated that the halfling had rolled off its back and splashed into the underground lake. A frustrated ranger summoned all of his strength and whacked at a joint on the leg just as Lady Irena blasted it with another fireball. Between the two forms of damage, the leg came apart and pitched the beast forward into the water. The wave knocked over Cabe and sent the already prone women moving backwards into the surf. A war cry from Welby 
showed that he had regained his position on the crab and was sliding from back to front, but slowing himself down with a dagger placed into the fissure of the plating. The halfling reached the head area and had successfully split open the tough outer shell of the giant crab, and Fargus wasted no time in moving forward and piercing the softness that was now exposed. As Cave, Irena, and Elaine all regained their footing, the pair finished off the creature with a flurry of bladed attacks. Whoa, 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 there, ranger, yelled out a soaked sister Elaine. The ranger stopped stabbing for a moment and then realized that the beast was quite dead now. Silence fell over the group with the lapping of water making the only noise. The torch had retained its position in the wall and still offered illumination with the party's long shadows dwarfing the big creature. A low whistle was heard and each member of the group spun around to find a little girl watching in astonishment. The group quickly recognized her as one of the orphans they had met earlier. That was so scary, but it was so neat, said the little girl. You guys really are heroes. Dingus Overmeyer and the other children peered around the corner in concern, but smiles crossed their faces as they realized the party had survived. They approached the party and pointed out injuries to each of them. A proud Fargus announced that his wounds were badges of honor, one from hard fighting. Cabe Silvertongue touched his forehead gingerly on a nasty gash along the hairline. Yeah, that's what these are, badges of honor. Sister Elaine, I don't suppose you could give me a little healing. Oh, you're hurt worse, he said. The group looked to the cleric and found that she had a nasty wound to her shoulder. The bard quickly scoffed off his own injuries and everyone checked on the cleric. As Dingus and the children examined the dead crab, Sister Elaine had everyone step back. Silently, she mouthed the words of a healing incantation and the group watched as the wide gash glowed blue before returning to a healed state. Nicely done, pointed out the ranger. Everyone checked their own wounds and Sister Elaine handed over the healing potion to Cabe. Use only half. It should be plenty to cure your scalp, she cautioned. The bard took a long quaff from the bottle, but was careful about the amount. He replaced the cork and handed it back to the cleric. Touching his forehead, he chuckled and thanked her again. Fargus questioned Dingus, who pointed out that the crab could feed a lot of people. The orphanage master inquired if he and the children could partake in it. Fargus looked to the others and back to Dingus, stating, Knock yourself out, man. Lady Irena was watching Welby move about the water and yelled for him to be careful. Cabe inquired as to what the rogue was doing and the response indicated that Welby had felt something in the water. Dipping below the water line, he popped back up with a human skull in his hand, which took everyone aback momentarily. He tossed the head over his shoulder and went back under. For several moments, the group looked on pensively. Fargus and Irena grew worried and began to wait out when the halfling popped to the surface with a large smile on his face. Sloshing forward, the group said that he was reckless for his actions, but the small delver triumphantly raised an old rucksack as his treasure. The group returned to the dry tunnel that they had traveled through as Dingus and the children shaved delicious meat from the giant crab for food. Welby shook the sewer water off him, spraying the group who took a dim view of his action. Dropping to his knees, he began to pull forth items from the bag. After several minutes and a new torch, all of the items were displayed on the dry floor. A quick inventory resulted in eight gold crowns, 22 silver swords, and 50 copper ingots a few flasks of oil, flint and steel, and 50 foot of wet hemp rope rounded out the contents. Well, not bad, I think, pointed out Lady Irena, as the others nodded in approval. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, Thanks for listening.